So things are happening in our school system. Start. Did you get the report? Yes. Okay. Hiya. So let's start. So in these stories that happened at uh, Mukumu Girls and then is later on that happened at uh, Butere Boys High School, both in Kakamega County, mm. we saw that quite a number of people were hospitalized. 1,500 boys were sent home Wednesday when more than 100 of them then suffered the same symptoms. And notes that we're looking at the same symptoms of a tummy ache and um, um, uh, diarrhea. Some of them having to go to hospital, getting replacement therapy, mm. etc. Mm. Um, water replacement therapy. But there was no infection in terms of a bacteria. Mm. That's interesting to note. Because then, um, antibiotics were not administered. In the three cases, um, some results are still being waited for. But the initial reports are stating that they would have passed on because of severe dehydration as a result of the severe diarrhea that they had been facing. The 244 girls who had been admitted to hospital in seven days coming from Mukumu girls all had the same symptoms, majority of whom then had been later discharged after taking the water replacement therapy. On further investigations by health officials at the county and national level from the Ministry of Health, it was found that the storage areas where they put their grains and their beans had a moisture problem. Okay. Moisture problem in most cases leading to what? Aflatoxin. Aflatoxin. Yes. Now, the only way for them to be able to do that was, number one, get rid of all the current storage that they have because there's no telling how much of it has been infected. It's already been contaminated. Okay. So they had been ordered, number one, to get rid of the current storage, and then number two, sanitize properly. They can okay. only do that when these children are out of school. Okay. So moisture problem. What causes the moisture problem? It could be a, it could be many many things. Including there could be a leak. Including there could be a leak uh -huh. from water pipes and uh -huh. walls. Um, there could be that the area is just not aerated. The rains have come also. Aeration. There, there could mm -hmm. be a leak in the in the roof mm -hmm. because of rains, and then you have extra water coming in. They've not stated what exactly is causing the moisture, but there was a moisture problem. So and basically, the stores are damp. Yes, and in both of these schools. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is also the problem specifically at Butere where one problem was a leakage problem. Now, they could not tell if the leakage from some of these pipes came from um, was, or rather was connected to the sewage system, which is now one of the things that uh, they're also uh, trying to There check. was a leakage in some of the pipes that were in leading, the storage. Leading to the storage area. Now, what they couldn't tell is if this leakage is connected to the sewer system. There's some system. Lewis, sewer system somewhere where the sewer is leaking into this pipe, which, which is, is leaking into... Oh, okay. Which is now why mm. <coughs> the head said, everybody... Go home. Go home. So that we can now check. And as soon as we find out what's wrong, we fix we, it. And then, and then you can we can ask back. you to come back. But the initial reports of there being cholera, mm. as you can see from the national report of two people having died from cholera in Nairobi with the over 40 cases, mm. these are not cholera so cases. So this is not cholera no, that's caused not. the incidences in both schools? In both schools. Cholera ruled out? Ruled out okay. for cholera. It's a sanitation problem, and the sanitation problem is being dealt with by all students having been, as of yesterday evening, all students having been sent home as they deal with the areas of storage. You do know that uh, when you talk cholera and sanitation, you talk Same about... Same thing. Precisely. It you talk about twins. Same was up. Yeah. Mm. But now... Unless you're saying it's uh, something else. So san dampness, blah, 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 aflatoxin, oh. blah, 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 something else. So you're going to eat that food that's been infected. You will get a tummy ache. That you food was have... cooked. Mm. Yes. But it's like fluorosis. Whether or if you if you have water that has a high fluoride, fluoride content, right? It doesn't matter how you much drink you the water. It. If you want to boil it until it's death, but mm. you still ingest it, it's still in the system. Fluoride is still fluoride. Yeah. Yes. You see, perhaps there is a more comprehensive report that will follow. I'm mm. sure there will be. But these explanations, in my mind, are inadequate. Mm. They are still they are still, still preliminary. Yeah. Yes. It just it it gives you an indication of the direction this thing is taking, mm. but it doesn't give you the sort of breakdown of what they know, not think, know to be the problem. Because in the absence of that, how then do you resolve it if That's you don't true. really know what That's the true. problem was? Another issue here is that also we do not have the collated medical report from the tests done on each and every one 
of those who were hospitalized. Mm. That is still yet to come out. Also, you do not have the conclusive post-mortem results from the three girls who passed. Is that that okay. is still being waited on? All right. Okay. Yeah. But the one thing that is worrying, according to now what health officials are saying last evening, one thing that is worrying for them that in Mukumu girls specifically, the same thing happened last year 2022 at around the same time it was not as high in terms of those who are suffering symptoms mm. and those who had to be hospitalized but the same thing happened so there's something that is not being done right health officials and also um um, the PS Ministry of Health then said last evening that they wanted to make sure that there was not a lingering and consistent issue having seen that this issue has repeated itself yeah okay so that is what is worrying that the same thing happened but it kind of was like okay quiet move on nobody died mm. this time somebody died is it possible that something worse could happen so whatever the issue is specifically with the sanitation because right now it seems to be a blanket statement sanitation problem we'll clean it up and make sure that there's it's not uh, or that where you're storing your food if that room is going to is damp for whatever reason because of the location in the building or the location in the area move it somewhere else have your storage somewhere else it seems that you know that the area is damp but you're not going to be creative enough to move your storage somewhere else move it essentially is what is being said now so for buteria boys it mm. was clear that there's a leak somewhere the sanitation is not up to scratch mm. and that has to be sorted out before anybody can come back to school and they get rid of their current storage dr belio keeps saying the ps for basic education was in those schools eh? mm. now is there any indication of what instructions have been given to the school heads across the country on what to look out for because you've seen this thing happening here. So you've seen there's a possibility of, okay, because of the storage, the damp, dampness, contamination, aflatoxin, grain. There's another possibility because of the rains, blah, 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 contamination, uh, sewer seeping into drinking water and all these other things. And these are, we're talking about ab around 4,000 students are, are now at home from these two schools yes. because of this particular incident. What is being done for example, to do a, an immediate spot check across all the schools, all heads have been given instructions, do this, do this, do the other, given some protocol, follow this, check, 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 check. And if you find an issue, address it immediately. Or if you find an issue that reaches a, this point, escalate it, and then we make a decision whether to send the children home, whether to uh, get rid of all the grain, all those things. What are we doing to avert a third incident? It would be nice if something like that was being done, wouldn't mm. it? But unfortunately, we've not seen any indication of that. And usually, unfor again, unfortunately, that the state towards most things is reactive. It's reactive. Yeah. You're not going to have such a thing happen it's like, hey, it's until okay. something like death occurs. Okay? Um, it would be great. Do you remember Sacred Heart School, the one we were referring to yesterday? That's the M name of that school. Mukumu, yeah. Uh, no, no. I'm talking about now the, the school collapse a few years ago. Ah, it was after Just, that school collapse hmm. that then C.S. Magoha said, you know what? Do an audit of all the schools in the country and come back to me by August 31st and tell me exactly what is going on. Mm. If that report then had been done, it definitely was not made public because we do not know the state of schools in terms of their structure and safety. But unfortunately, most of this is a react is a re the reactive nature of things mm. is a problem that there is actually no... Um, um, initiative to make sure that you have a standard um, way of operation, yep. especially when it comes to things like this, yep. sanitation, storage of food, things that could get extremely sensitive. You may find that the PS would say, okay, guys, we need to make sure that everything is going on. That's great. But for me, that needs to happen with regularity. It needs to happen with regularity, especially because schools, you're going to be storing bulk amounts of food at any one time as you should as you should mm. it's going to happen so what are you doing to make sure that at all times the minimum standards for food storage have been met because are you going to wait for another 250 students to get sick before you now say okay mm. are our standards up to scratch but the reactive nature of things unfortunately is what we are seeing here and what you're prescribing eric makes absolute sense but unfortunately that's just not going to happen until something else goes bad that's just unfortunate. It's a but sad that's bit. Because that's the first thing that you'd like to hear from the minister. So the minister, maybe the CS is not in the country, but the PS is around. The PS should be speaking. The school is a precious talent, the one here. Precious talent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sacred Heart Mukumu is, Mukumu is the one, one in Kakamega. Yeah, thank you.
the PS should now be addressing the country and saying, look, so this is the unfortunate thing that has happened. We are investigating to find out what has happened. We are speaking to this community of this, uh, in that school. Of course, when the PS visited, did not find any parent. There are 2,000 children mm. and they've gone home. They are with their parents. They need to hear what's happening. Uh, we have reached out to, we are speaking now, speaking to the 2,000, 4,000 parents, assuming that every child here is... Mm. Uh, yeah. Two parent home. Uh, Four thousand parents from these uh, schools, but also countrywide, this is what is happening, and we want to address this matter this way. So, in case a new a head teacher from another school basically finds out that there's an issue, and they decide to send their children home, you don't panic. Mm. You know, okay, it's because they've inspected, they are sending the children home for a week, and then the children can go back home. Manage this situation in terms of a conversation. We'd like to see that happening. Three children dying, it's three children too many. Yes. Those are three children who have died. We cannot wait to see another 200 children hospitalized somewhere else in the country or another one child dying. You know, it's a pattern. Huh? Mm. Just take, for instance, the story of precious talent. Yeah. Mm. What that did we find that indeed a team from the ministry had actually looked at the school and had issued a report yes, they had. condemning certain buildings, mm. if you recall. Mm. It wasn't and the, Precious Talent was on the list. It was on the list, meaning yeah. there is a team that actually did that. There were schools in the, those sides of... There, there were schools all over the country where they said, these ones, this is what should happen. Was that followed through? No. Which means those who go around ensuring that the buildings in which children are receiving the education is sound mm. did their job mm -hmm. now there's another group of people who are supposed to do yet another job ensure that if this isn't followed perhaps you shut down that school until things mm. are sorted out or you throw licenses are given by the ministry of education are they not mm. okay we did not hear of any of that that's number one but why i'm saying there's a pattern I'm starting with the issue of the schools being built, how they are built, the buildings itself, mm. the buildings themselves. Then I am looking at the problems that we keep hearing that emanate from, should we say, there are those who say it is discipline issues among the students, mm. but we listen to what else they say and they complain about regarding the schools that they are in. Okay. Now this matter of food has come up. Then there was the issue of fees. The ministry says fees should not be paid at this level or should, this is what should happen. Mm. Yeah, or and don't yet, send them home or whatever. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, don't send them. But what do you hear? P children are sent home. And the ministry has issued. Have you heard of any headmaster who's been called in to be disciplined for sending children home? I haven't. Mm. Maybe you have. No. The issue of fees. How many times are we at this back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? The ministry says this. <laughs> the, the, the head teachers go and do something completely different. <clears throat> now, the Ministry of Education are the ones who by law have the mandate to ensure that they manage the education of the young people in this country. Mm. Now, through the TSE, the TSE pays these teachers. Are you telling me that when we hear these things happening, that the TSE can't quite manage their docket. Are we saying that the TSE can't do what they're supposed to do? Are we saying that the ministry can't do what they're supposed to do? Now, someone will say, but it's only one or two schools. Uh, well, it, these things shouldn't happen. It's, it, it, it's not that we're going to judge it by the, 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 the minuscule numbers of schools that have a problem. The problem shouldn't be there. They absolutely shouldn't be there. What? You when know, a school is burnt down, mm. is it... Are we going to have the conversation and say, hey, well, it was only one school? Hmm. Or if children die and we say, well, only three children died. Yeah, we have 10 million children in school. schools. Yes, so only three died, mm -hmm. really. But the, the, the sad answer is yes. Yes, it is. The sad answer is that actually, yes. And you know where I'm going with this? I am going with the CBC. And I'm talking about mm. students who are supposed to have begun they are learning yes mm. how has that gone so far oh it's going very well ct it's going very well money has finally been disbursed and and they are now waiting for it to get into the accounts so where then it can start now you uh, know what eh, CT? yes we have an education problem in this country it's yep. actually a crisis let's not 
sugarcoat this thing and call it many other things. We have an education crisis in Kenya. And unless we are talking about such, eh, we are not addressing issues. We have our leaders in parliament, we have our leaders across the country who are not thinking about children. They are thinking about everything else. Oh, cost of living. Okay, so that's what we can deal with. Now we need to talk about these servers. We need to talk about this. We need to have conversation in parliament. We need to have it outside parliament. But the main issues that's affecting Kenyans are not being addressed. Education is one big one. We have asked this question very many times on this show. When was the last time you saw a brand new school built? A government school. A government school built in your ward. When was the last time you saw one new school built? no school here here is a school that can address the children in that ward mm. or the overcrowding that we the see in the schools that exist because what we end up with is now this kind of thing that we have crowd overcrowding in schools when you see a school like mukumu girls sacred heart mukumu girls it's an old school, it's an old school. it has over 2000 students today mm. it wasn't built for 2000 no students. it wasn't it wasn't when look at all these schools and if you look at the student population let's say 20 years ago and the student population today look at the infrastructure that was there 20 years ago and the infrastructure today it is not matching no the school population has tripled in the last 20 years the school infrastructure has not tripled in terms of development what conversations are we having about that why are we not having those conversations the number of teachers are they adequate to address this so you have a school that now has to think of having 10 streams per class 10 scream, streams. Form one, you're admitting 900 children. In one school. One school. Because you have to receive 900 children coming to this school for form one. How many streams are you talking about? And this is replicated across the country. It was the case in uh, the school that our friend Edwin was telling us the other day. It was the case that everywhere, this is what's happening. This is what uh, we're told about Gatina in Nairobi, in Dagoretti North. The number of schools. So we have an issue with infrastructure. We have not built a proper infrastructure. We have an issue with funding. We call it free education, free primary education, free day secondary education. A majority of our schools in this country are day secondary education, are day secondary schools. They are not get, getting adequate funding. So it ends up going into school fees issue. People don't have money that they ought to be raising to pay school fees it, it's an entire baggage that we have and we're not addressing it and yet every year every year this is the second highest budget item yeah and every year second you keep to security admitting, yeah and every year you keep admitting a million odd students into the same every year system. we are giving birth to a million children mm -hmm. yep in and we're adding more five things. years they start going to school in seven years they're in grade one is it going to take a burst at the seams of this for something to be done about it? Because look, you're talking about the hardware of, of, of education, mm -hmm. your classrooms, your labs, your et cetera, et cetera. And then you're also talking about the software of the system as well, adequate in terms of teachers and, a pla and placing them where they should be, yep. adequate in terms of funding, which is the fuel for which this needs to happen. Even, you call it the biggest budget item in, uh, or the second biggest, biggest budget item um, it's the biggest. every year mm. right but does it translate and that's for me it should does it translate then into making sure that quality is delivered across all levels and when we talk about decategorization of schools we, we for me in as much as that's a very important subject it is far removed from the reality in terms of what's happening today mm. when will you start having a decategorization conversation when for example schools opened in january and in late March is when Treasury is having some kind of conversation about, okay, let's start delivering this money. When in November you were talking that you're going to need 70,000 new teachers and then you say, okay, well, we can do according to the TSC, we can do 30,000. Hmm. And in February, those 30,000, where are they? Okay, finally you get the 30,000 and they start putting, and then they come and tell you, okay, you've come. Thank you very much. You've come to teach high school. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> However, I have a math problem in, in, grade, in four. grade four. So thank you for coming. That is where you're going. Mm. You as the teacher, you say, well, it's either that or I don't have a job. Nay? So you're going to do it. So hardware, software, every we have a conversation very big in issue. between education is taking a 
it brought if we were up, to I mean, talk about anything if we were to talk about any you know bipartisan multipartisan whatever whatever kind of dialogue it should start with education our children are not getting what they should be getting in schools they're not and somebody can come here and sit down and start to justify but you see uh, we have look you know, at where we've come from the last nine x number of years we've now hired x number of more teachers in fact since president ruto came in and he has said we're going to hire and we've started hiring you know Kibaki hired uhuru hired the number of teachers that were there we have to go to keep acknowledging yeah yeah we can acknowledge but let's let's also acknowledge that our population is growing by a million per year our population is 75 percent below 35 our population is actually a very high percentage below 18. all those children are in school what kind of facilities do we have what kind of infrastructure do we have what kind of teachers do we have what are we teaching them our cbc is in shambles i was telling you ct here's a story on page 18 of the standard this morning at least 9.6 billion shillings has finally been released as capitation to junior secondary schools. On today is what date? Today Please. is the 7th, 7th of, April. of April. They went to school two months ago. They went to school on 6th February. That's when they went. To, they reported for yes. grade 7. Yes. Okay. Two months later, <laughs> the final 9.6 billion shillings has been released. The government has also disbursed 15 million textbooks for JSS. Principal Secretary for Basic Education, Dr. Belio Kipsang, said the Ministry of Education released the amount to implement the JSS program across the country. He was speaking when he toured uh, the Sacred Heart Mukumu Girls High School on Wednesday. Kipsang said the government has made good progress in terms of stabilizing the JSS program. I want to say that at the beginning of the week we released 9.6 billion shillings capitation to junior secondary schools and i can tell the public that the government is making good progress in terms of settling down the jss we are at 80 percent in terms of books distribution to jss on monday we distributed 15 million books out of 18 million books that are required for our grade 7 learners no no. Two months down the road is no. when you're saying you you released. And you don't deserve books. a pat on the back for that, for doing some lackadaisical, mediocre work. I'm sorry, but Hold you on, don't deserve continue. a pat on the, pat on the back. Let me continue. He said TSA, the TSC has so far posted 30,000 teachers that were recruited. Posted them where exactly? We are settling the issue of JSS and we believe that by the time our kids return from Easter holidays, grade 7 will be fully settled down. And by the time we close schools, the government will have fully settled the matter of JSS. Excuse me. By the time Excuse Term me. 1 is over. Excuse me. <laughs> by the time we come back from Easter holidays, it's Tuesday next week. Mm. Term 1 ends mm. a week after that. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The term ends a week after that. The yes. term ends on the 20th of April. Ah, so by the time now, we, you see we are at 80%. By end of next week, we'll have fully settled. Can I ask a simple question? Don't ask. Please, Why are you no. asking simple Please. questions? Please. Okay, ask a um, complicated question. If Eric <laughs> doesn't want to hear the simple ones. I'm asking simple, simple things. Yes. Sir. What quality of education then did you deliver between February 6th and April 6th to these grade 7 learners? Uh, you see, you see, we were settling down the JSS. I ask again, what quality of education did you deliver in the 75% of the term? Mm -hmm. So essentially we are saying that Term one is just uh, you see, now, that <laughs> we are going to conduct a qualitative research at the end of this year to see now the kind of impact and the quality that was delivered. And, and, we, and, and I cannot and answer. And a task that force will I cannot, I cannot answer a quality question imagine, just like that. Can you imagine? It's almost laughable because laugh, laughable in a painful manner that we are saying, okay. Term, the first term has ended and we are now at 80% of yeah, what we yeah. should have delivered. When they come to start, when they two. come back to come and close school, <laughs> we'll now <laughs> have reached Let's take maybe a break. Hey God, you don't know. ask questions about quality. Quality is not a question you ask and you get a straight up answer like that. Quality is not counting like beans. How many bags of maize have you delivered in that school? That is not how you ask quality. What's the quality of the maize I have to test? Our flat top people will die. We have an education issue in this country and we this is what we're talking about this morning yeah grade seven students finally money was released on monday this week for jss and this is two months after the children reported to school yeah thirty thousand teachers have reportedly been recruited by the tsc thirty thousand teachers and how many jss schools across the country 
Ooh, uh, you know, Eric, okay, because no, these no, are no. the teachers who are going exclusively for JSS. I understand. We are not transferring you. secondary school teachers to JSS. These are we are not transfer, transferring primary school teachers to JSS. These teachers are going for JSS. How many schools do we have in the country that have a JSS classroom in grade 7? In, you know, Eric, uh, 20,000 of them have been approved to host JSS, according to the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. So you have 30,000? Yes. 20,000 schools? Yes. So one and a half teachers per school? There you go. <laughs> yep. One and and remember... You agree which there where the half will go. And remember, JSS is not one classroom. No. no. JSS is several streams. Okay? There is 7 West, 7 East, 7 North, 7 W, 7 Orange, 7 Yellow, 7 whatever they want to, how they, however they name the schools. 7A, 7B, mm. 7C. One teacher has been posted. Yes. Is that because all those 7A, B, Giraffe and Octopus is one school. Mm. Mm -hmm. Have the schools who uh, this money has been disbursed to acknowledge receiving the money? I went on Monday. Uh -uh. You it's see not now. Possible. <clears throat> and then today is holiday. And then yeah. Monday is also holiday. No, no. It well, was released from Treasury on Monday. I have understood. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday, so by the Wednesday, time they like come this. back from that's why that's why Belly is saying by the time they come back from Easter, we'll have settled them. Okay, <laughs> we believe the time our kids return from Easter holidays, grade seven learners will be fully settled because even the books now, these fifteen million books, will have arrived in the schools. You know, in the previous government, towards the end of their term. Mm somewhere in the middle of the end of their term, there was a lot of talk again in the education sector about some desks that were supposed to be made. Those 10 billion shillings just for desks. Yes, mm. and they were even magnanimous about it. These things are going to be made locally mm. yes. by local artisans. Yes. Okay? I have never seen or heard of a report mm. of the completion of that particular program. But the story was money had been this, but. But. and yet... We still heard of people who had supplied desks and had not been paid. Hey. So when I ask if the recipients, the anticipated recipients of this money have received the money, it is not a facetious I ask. I am actually asking because there's something about money being sent <laughs> and people receiving money. Hmm. We hear this story also with the Treasury with regards to county governments. Oh, yeah. You are told money has been sent. Remember how they wanted to clear pending bills? Hmm. Mm, by October 31st. That story, it, it, it has been replicated many times, many, 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 many times. Mm. And every time that story came out was money was sent. Mm. Okay? Money kept being sent. Now, I want to hear the story of the money was received. You know how sometimes you can be sending a message on your phone and then in your head you sent the message. Then you come back days later and you're like, ah, no. I had not, not sent mm. the message if it's still in draft. Mm. You know, I, I am not like government. <laughs> Because government receives money daily. Me, mm. I don't receive money daily. Mm. Okay? The government can go to sleep. The money will still be collected. Mm. Okay? The government can travel out of the country. The money will still be collected. Okay? You understand? Mm. The money, the government can go on a walk about. The money will still be collected. Mm. I mean, I'm very different from the government. Do you know the thing that's bothering me? Mm. I'm asking you as I refuse to answer my question. Ask again, please. Okay. What, what quality? What is the quality of education <laughs> that was delivered to these students between February 6th and April 6th, which was yesterday, 2023. Why are you asking because difficult questions? I think let's just say, no, let's, let's say that... Teachers because, became creative. Because teachers were being... Were being um, what's that word for sending teachers? Posted. Posted. <laughs> yes. You could have just said... <laughs> no. I was about to say this. You were asking somebody who has been posted before. <laughs> if the teachers who, were, who were disbursed. <laughs> They were disbursed. They were released. <laughs> <laughs> Teachers were being posted. Uh -huh. <laughs> Between that January and uh, today, they're still being posted. Okay? Mm. So obviously, there are some schools that have not had a teacher posted to them. Number one. Number two, money had not been disbursed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the money had not been posted. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> number three, books had not been Post. It's, not, it's not posted, it's not dis dispersed, Released. it's Di distributed. distributed. Okay. The English language is good with this mm. thing. I'm telling you. Yes. Books had not been distributed, teachers had not been posted, posted. Money, money had, had not, not been, been disbursed. disbursed. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. But the children had been admi admitted. admitted. So, yes. Get so these you see things now right. Things. Now, quality then becomes an issue. 
Okay, but you can understand it's because of all these headaches. Remember, we had started this year on a bit of a confusion as government because um, of uh, the change in policy. Uh, as they closed school last year, hold on, hold on. Um, as we were going into, as they were sitting their grade six exams last year, the understanding was that they were going to go into high school, high school, secondary based junior secondary, and then the government changed policy and said, now let's actually domicile this in the junior primary schools. And then the issue of the quality, whether we have teachers who can do this, emerged, and the TSC was then mandated to immediately embark on recruitment of thirty thousand teachers, which they have been doing. Mm. And now the schools in the primary school were told okay can you now create room to have to accommodate these children who you had not prepared to continue having them in your school but now you have them you see all these issues all these issues that were brought by you know the national uh we cannot say confusion because the government is never confused uh, the not. national um, um okay whatever word you want to fix there uh what has led to this and the one million children or thereabouts who are in grade seven have basically just been going to play football and karate. Thank you very and much. And whatever other game you want to call for the last two months. Thank you very much. Okay. That is it. That you have had children who have been in school for the last eight weeks hmm? mm. who basically have been playing karate. But as you said, nothing has question. happened. Mm. According to and yes. then you know what is going to happen thereafter. The mm. books would have arrived, the teachers would be then you have people rushing through a syllabus so that they can, you know, make hay as the sun is still shining Actually, by the end of the lot, year. It's a lot more difficult to achieve than that because Good these Lord. students are not going to learn one subject. Mm. Exactly. Twelve okay. is the subject in yes. grade seven. Mm. It is twelve subjects yes. in grade yes. seven. And even if it was one teacher to teach all these 12 subjects, and even if it was just one, st one class, mm. okay, there is this little matter of the number of students who have also reported to school. Yep. As of February, if we're looking at reports that were given by the ministry, the numbers were not reported were huge. 486,000 to be precise. Wow. So close to half the number of students who you expected to be in school were not in, school. Not in school. Have they reported now? Because now we're in April. Mm. See, so... This particular subject is, there's a multiplicity. The, 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 the facets and the contours around it are many. Mm. They will be studying mathematics, science, social studies, geography, physical education, business studies, computer science, language arts, agriculture, health education, religious education, visual arts, home science, chemistry, foreign language, and civics. Let me tell you something about the creativity of, t of teachers. Huh? Mm. Mm. I don't think that these students have not been learning. Not really. No, that's mm. what I said, except for, the, except for the creativity of some teachers yes. who have been in school and said, come on, guys, okay, we don't have books, we don't have this, but we're not just going to sit here. I mean, that was a joke, obviously. They're not sitting in school playing kati. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> they are... They, well, well, one you know, would hope... If you give them, tell them... Uh, that there are some teachers who are doing children, something. Children, I want guys. to do exercise one, two, three, four. You know, they don't have books. Yeah, exactly. All right? Mm. So even the teachers would be coming to class. Eh? They don't have books. The books have just been distributed. Mm -hmm. So they've been coming with the grade six books or the standard seven books. That's what I was just about to say. Not that CBC. they still are not being the taught. Standard seven, seven books, books are the ones that the teachers are coming to class with and telling them open page one, Watch do exercise page one up to page three. I'll come Essentially, do revision. Mm. Do revision. Mm. Essentially, yeah. re revision. And why revision is important now is this. Usually, as you go through the school system, all you're doing is upgrading on your earlier learning. Mm. Right. Every once in a while, at some level, they introduce a completely new subject. Yeah. But by and large, it's an increase in content. But also, if you're looking at this particular new system, it's the manner in which it is being approached. By the way, you'll be told that all these systems are student-centered. In reality, they actually are not. Mm. Okay? Because this particular JSS, if you look at it, this is where they're now trying to actually actualize this called the centrality of the student in the learning process, where the student, the, you allow the student's mind, imagination to take center stage in the learning process as opposed to the teacher who's always infusing yeah. this particular student with a lot of knowledge and information. Mm. The knowledge you produce as a teacher is more or less like a catalyst to get the student to. <coughs> but truth be told, huh, it doesn't matter whether it's central or not, mm. content has to be there and content has to be taught. Yep. Otherwise, you are not teaching that subject yep. or there is no learning taking place on that particular subject. Now, the complaint that was heard about the tasks that parents now will have to face in, ma in managing these matters because mm. they have to refer, the, sh the children have to refer to them. Mm. 
Uh, may I just add that this is a problem for parents whose children are in day schools. Because if the child is in secondary school, yeah. they don't need to go to their parents to have this thing explained to them. Mm. And also, the boarding school, you have more time on your hands. Because you're all in school. You don't have to walk to school. You don't have to walk back from school. You know, all these things that the children, the children in the day school have, they don't have. Everything is like in a lab. It's mm. right there in front of you and before you. But remember, a majority, a vast majority of primary schools in Kenya My are day. Day. Yeah. Day. JSS is in the primary schools. Yes, it is. That means they're all day. Yep. Now, if from grade 6 or grade 3, 4, 5, 6, these kids were used to doing those practicals of go home, draw a cut, come back with it tomorrow, <laughs> go home, make, I don't know what, come with it tomorrow. For the last two months, what have they been doing? Going home. Go home. Come that's really it. That's really it. They've so, been going home. And that's why I'm saying the Ministry of Education needs to come out and say, all right, so people, we acknowledge that we've had an issue in terms of just rolling out the JSS. Eric, there's a point you made. And because we have an issue rolling out JSS, this is how we are addressing it. This is how we shall cover, recover those eight weeks that have basically gone down the drain. You know, there's a, there's a point you made mm. that I'd like to emphasize. Mm. I'm, I've been looking at some of these stories around these negotiations that are supposed to take place and the redu irreducible demands, blah, 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 left, right, and bipartisan, and, bipartisan mm. and tripartisan, whatever the case is. Mm. Let me just comment on this bipartisan thing before I get to this. You see, in the U.S. it's easy. Mm. You know why? They have two major parties, Republican, Democrats. So bipartisan, is, it's not difficult to discuss. Mm. Because after all, there are two parties. There are other parties that are registered, but these are the ones which count. Let me leave that aside for another day. Among the demands that apparently ODM boss had said the negotiations must prioritize, yeah. prioritize yeah. issues of lowering cost of unga, mm -hmm. fuel, mm -hmm. fuel, electricity, mm. and guess what? Education. School fees. School fees. Yeah. Now, you see, I think they haven't quite gotten to the heart of the matter. This is not a school fees problem. They don't get it. It's not a school fees problem. This demonstrates that they haven't, as Eric put it, haven't gotten it. They actually have. We have a problem in the education system. It's not fees. Mm -mm. It's not fees. Even this story of Unga and fuel and this is basically Azimio dangling the carrot. This is the same thing like in the BBI. Oh, you know, this BBI is going to be so good. Why? Because students, I mean, young people, as soon as you leave university, you don't have to start paying help immediately. You'll be given a seven-year moratorium, blah, blah. So, gee, uh, if you register a business today as a young person, you're going to be given a three-year moratorium, a tax holiday for three years, blah, 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 blah. So just those things that you dangle like this, but that's not the main thrust. No, it's not it wasn't the main thrust of BBI. Point number one here is not the main thrust of this bipartisan push. You know, and that's why they don't get, they don't understand. No, they don't get it. When they say, you know, lower the price of school fees, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? So what are you telling these seven members of your team to go and discuss? What are they saying? Are they going to say that uh, make? free primary education compulsory and then make it what are you, what, no. what no and also if how how soon shall we start talking about building new schools what is saying in fact even the get same thing uh bbi the one of the other dangling of carrots was you know if now we increase these constituencies by 70 we create 70 new constituencies you know what that means that means that children are now going to get more children are going to get bursaries from the cdf <laughs> create 70 constituencies so that they more children get bursary all right if you think that is bizarre the solution <laughs> uh, we now have a situation where there's a bill that the senate has proposed where mm. if you are a cattle rustler and you're found guilty you're mm. sentenced to life that of course will solve cattle rustling well, that that's it that will address the issue <laughs> this these leaders are totally, totally blind, deaf, and dumb to the issues that affect Kenyans. They don't seem to get it they at all. They don't get it at all. I they think don't. the question that sometimes we ought to ask, because you're saying it's not a school fees issue. No, it's not. What value is being placed on actually securing the livelihoods of Kenyans? Because we, you know, we keep saying that it is not your business, number one, as government to provide jobs or to make sure that your children go to school or to mm -mm. it is about providing a conducive environment within which these things can happen
providing an environment in which your children can go to school that means doing everything that you need to do to make sure that the infrastructure is in place doing everything you need to do to make sure that all these softer issues that you need to happen actually happen and happen on time in order for these things to happen when we talk about business so that people can you know set up a business have you created the environment within which these things can actually happen, happen. if you're not doing that you're actually not doing your job so what value are you placing on making sure that the livelihoods of the kenyans over whom you govern is actually secured so for me it's a value placement issue yeah it's a value placement. That is why it's okay for you to see that in Mukumu Girls in 2022, there was a problem and people got sick. But you just, you know, hush, hush, sweep it under the carpet. Yeah. Until this year, people die. Then they say, oh, perhaps we ought to do something about it. That's it. What value are you placing on it? And it shows me that you place very little value. That's why you can walk about the country, do tour, see this, that, whatever. And it doesn't really phase you. That it doesn't phase you that people who are going into a new system of school have lost three months yep. in a year. Yep. And it's okay. You're even saying, ah, we have tried. Only one term. We have tried. Mm. By the end of that one term, we would have gotten all our ducks in a row. Mm. It doesn't phase you. You place no value on it whatsoever. So as, as far as Bob's your uncle, you could then even wait until the end of <laughs> next term for all we care. Imagine. And it wouldn't matter because you've come and told Kenyans, we are trying. After all, it's Treasury who didn't give us money in time. Are you kidding me? Abdullah what Yalas. value are you placing? It's complete. It's it's about everything else. Abdullah Yalas is saying, we have more than 32 primary, public, and private. Yeah? 2018 mm. teachers in primary educational institutions. Rains have affected parts of Kenya. Uh, the teacher pupil ratio is 31 to 1. Japan's teacher ratio is 16 to 1. 14 to 1 in Finland, 9 to 1 in Canada. Education is just a source of funds in Kenya, not quality. Actually, or equity. You again, Eric, you, Eric, you know, today you are going to be quoted extensively. Mm. You brought up this issue last year several times. The government seems to have determined that when it comes to the education sector and the health sector, <coughs> their unspoken partners are the private sector. Mm. So whatever the government is supposed to do, they assume the private sector will look at the gap and the private sector will, will fill, fill the that particular gap. So that when you talk about schools, private sector will build more schools. Mm. You talk about hospitals, private sector will build more hospitals. Mm. Yes, it is good that the business sector is providing, or the, uh, the private sector is providing a much needed service. But then one has to then ask, so what exactly is the role of government exactly? Yeah, what's government doing? Yes. And especially if you consider the amount the percentage of budgetary allocation every year yes. to those two sectors yes it does the percentage of budgetary allocation every year <coughs> to the education sector mm. either directly through the ministry or indirectly through the ngcdf mm. that goes into education mm. how much money we spend over a trillion shillings every year pumping it into education mm. how much money do we pump into healthcare mm. direct government and grants and all this support that we receive it's from a, development a, partners, a, a how amount. much money? And yet over 40% of our health facilities are private. Yes. And, and that private 40% is actually carrying more than 40% of hospital <coughs> visits. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. If you look at it now, if you break it down in the lower cadres of society, actually you'll find that more and more people in the lower social stratum go to public not public private health facilities they prefer to primary care they prefer to and why do you think they prefer to because they don't have any exactly if you go to where in embakasi which one now north. go to this embakasi north this okay north. let's go to north mm. north of uh, that one of uh, D -D dandora and a bit north. of karyubangi let's mm. talk about karyubangi into dandora how many public health facilities are there and how many private health facilities just like a small window it's a clinic it's a clinic it's a clinic you'll find more private health facilities yep. than the public ones there are now if you want to go this way if you want to go from ambassador you're going to siokimau take siokimau let's start at siokimau and let's not even go far okay let's go far let's go siokimau <laughs> let's start let's... at Hil hilton garden thank you very much okay <laughs> go all the way interchange kitengela go let me tell you do you know how many pu public health facilities there are mm. Do you know? No, I don't. Zero. On both sides of the road? Zero. What? Z? Row. Row. 
But the health facilities. There are health facilities. And they're private. They are private. So, so we're talking about the entire the entirety of Shokimau, crossover into Kenani. Eh? Yes. Crossover into Green Park. Go all the way into Machakos mm. Junction. Mm. Zero. Mm. No health facility. Public. The health facilities, but no they're public. no public ones. Mungu idea, sisi. These are the conversations that Kenya should be having. These are the conversations we should be having right, left, center. Mm. Because these are the things that count. Why? Because they refer to the future of the country. The future of the country is in our children. Yes, that's and it. How we are bringing them up, how, and what kind of education yeah. we're giving them.